and welcome back to my Bash Scripting series. In this particular episode, what we're going to do is take a look at arguments. But no, I'm not telling you guys that you should have an argument with your scripts. I don't really think that's going to go well, and when it comes to debating, you can't really debate with text. So no, not that. What I'm talking about is the ability to add arguments to your Bash scripts. Basically, you might want your Bash script to do something different depending on the arguments that are supplied on the command line. So let's just dive right in and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This one's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get started. What I'll do first is type out a super simple script that only contains a single line, but believe it or not, that's all we need in order to illustrate what an argument actually is in Bash. So here I have an empty script file, so let's begin. So what I'm going to do is type echo. I know we've been using that quite a bit throughout the series, but you know what? Echo is pretty cool. It works just fine. And what I'll do is type a sentence and I'll type you entered the argument and then a variable that is simply dollar sign one and then I'll end the quote. Now this is pretty interesting because from this we can actually glean that dollar sign one is actually a variable, but we didn't declare any variables and this echo statement is implying that a user entered something, but I didn't actually include any read statements or anything like that, so what is going on here? Well, I will show you exactly what's going on here. I will save the file and let's go ahead and run it. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to give the script an argument. I'll just type the word Linux. You know, Linux is awesome. Let's see what exactly happens. You entered the argument Linux. So if I bring up the script, and what we could see here is the text, you entered the argument, and when I entered Linux, it actually replaced dollar sign one with the word Linux. So the variable, in this case dollar sign one, is actually the argument. And the difference between an argument and a normal variable is that an argument is declared when you run the script rather than within the script itself. So when I entered the argument Linux, that actually replaced $1. $1 actually refers to the first argument. You could also have $2, $3, and so on. You can have more than one argument. And as an example, I will create, well, more arguments. I'll give it $2, $3, and you know what? I will also give it dollar sign four as well. So let's save the script. And what I will do is run it again, but this time I will give it four arguments on the command line. So what I have here are four arguments. I just typed four things that I happen to like personally. So if I press enter, is telling me that I've entered the argument, and I probably should have made that plural, but we'll look past that for now. You entered the argument Linux, pizza, books, and games. So now at this point, it should start to become more clear what exactly an argument is. Again, dollar sign one refers to the first argument, dollar sign two refers to the second, and so on. But you might not actually realize yet why this might be useful. When it comes to commands in Linux, arguments are extremely common. For example, if we type ls-l against the Etsy directory, we're essentially using the Etsy directory as an argument to the ls command. The ls command itself behaves differently depending on if you add an argument, in this case, the argument being a path. To see a similar script in action, let's change it up a bit and take a look at another example which is actually much shorter. So what I'll do is I will remove this entire line and I will type ls, just like that, dash lh, and then the argument dollar sign one. Now, spoiler alert, this script is quite possibly the most useless script that we've ever created in this entire series. But the only purpose for this script is to show you how arguments work. So even though we wouldn't use this on a production server, I think the fact that it's going to show you how arguments work is going to be useful in and of itself. So yet again, I will run the myscript.sh script, the one that we've been working on, and I will give it slash Etsy as an argument. 
And, well, it does the same thing. Now, we did lose colorized output here, but we're going to ignore that. Essentially, we recreated ls, even though there really wasn't any reason to do that, and the script calls the ls command anyway. We could have just typed ls and then the directory. That would have been a lot simpler. But what you just saw was an effective example of an argument. If we put aside the argument that this script isn't very useful, this should make it extremely clear why you might want to include an argument to a script. For example, let's say you have a backup script. In that case, you might want to give it an argument that is a path that you want to back up. In that case, that script would be incredibly useful, and the script would execute differently depending on the argument that you gave it. So you could give it, well, whatever path you want to back up. And then the script will change to back up that path, the path that you give it as an argument. That would be a very good use case for something like this. But you know what? Let's go ahead and remove this right here and create yet another example. I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it lines. And what I'll do is I will set it equal to ls-lh. And then I'll add an argument. And what I'll do is pipe that into the word count command, dash l for line count. And then I'll close the parentheses right here. And then I will type echo. You have objects in the dollar sign one directory. So I'm actually calling the argument twice within this script. So let's go ahead and run it. And again, I'm going to use this against the Etsy directory. And it's telling me that I have 247 objects in the Etsy directory. It didn't show me what the objects are, but it did give me a count. So it's a little bit more useful than the previous example, but maybe now you're starting to see some of the value. I used slash Etsy as an argument, and that's the directory that this script is going to look into and count the number of objects in. And it even went ahead and printed what I've entered for the argument in the echo line. So that way it creates a complete sentence that says you have 247 objects in the slash Etsy directory. So let's take a look at this. Here I'm creating a variable and I'm setting that variable to be equal to a command. Wait, what's going on here? Well, actually, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So the argument, again, dollar sign one, which I've entered as slash Etsy when I ran this example. So it's essentially the same thing as if I typed slash Etsy and hard coded that right here. But instead, what I did was I set it up as an argument. So this command right here, ls dash lh, and then a directory, in this case, it's an argument, and then piping that into word count dash l or wc dash l, that is an actual valid command on the command line. So for example, ls dash l slash etsy, and then I'll pipe that into wc dash l for line count. It's counting the number of lines. That's basically what it's doing. But it's telling me that I have 248 lines right here. Well, actually, it's 247. We don't want to count the first one. The first one, well, I'll show you what the first one is. I'll just go ahead and pipe the output into the head command. And this right here, where it says total, that is actually being counted as a line, even though it's not actually an object inside that particular directory. Therefore, that's why I have this right here. What I want to do is use a subshell and inside the subshell, I want to print the value of lines, the variable lines, which in this case is going to be 248. But what I want to do is subtract one from that because we shouldn't count the first line. That's not valid. And together that actually will print the number 247 because whatever's run in the subshell will be run in the background and the results will be returned, which is how this ends up getting replaced with 247. And then at the end, I'm printing dollar sign one. And that's just to reference the folder or the argument that the user entered in. So that creates our entire script. And this is interesting right here because this variable is actually being created from a subshell. It's actually being created from a command. So every time you run this script, lines will be equal to something different if you add or subtract contents from the directory that it's looking in. So the output of this script will always be different if the data that is being fed itself is different. 
However, as fun as this script happens to be, there is a legitimate problem with this script. And actually, there is a problem with every version of the script that we've done so far in this lesson. And the issue is this. What if I enter no argument at all? And I just run the script like this. What will happen? Is it going to crash? Or is it actually going to work? Well, check this out. We have some, well, invalid output here. We can even see that there's an additional space in between the words the and directory where a value is actually supposed to be. So basically the problem is that the script allows us to give it no arguments. And maybe for you that's fine. Maybe you have a default within the script, that's okay. And if the user doesn't enter in an argument, then, well, I guess they're accepting the default within the script. So you might be okay with that. However, most of the time, you really do want to check the user and make sure that they're doing exactly what you've asked them to do. In this case, I ignored the instruction. Well, to be fair, there wasn't an instruction. But I created the script and I knew what I was supposed to do. And oppositionally, I decided not to do it. I didn't give it an argument. So let's go ahead and open up the script again and see if there's a way that we can actually catch the user if they attempt to give it, well, no arguments. So right after lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an if statement right here. And I want to test for something. And what I want to test for is whether or not the variable dollar sign pound sign is not equal to one. And if that's the case, what do I want to do? So what I've done here is I've added an if statement. As you can see, we've created, well, actually a handful at least of if statements at this point within the course. But one thing we haven't done though, is we haven't explained this variable right here. So dollar sign pound sign, what that variable actually represents is the number of arguments that the user has passed into the script. So if a user provides one argument, then this is going to be equal to one. If they provided, I don't know, 1500 arguments, then this value right here will be 1500. Specifically, we're checking to see if it's not equal to one. We want this to be equal to exactly one. If it's not equal to one, then in that case, we're going to print some instructions to the user, letting them know what they did wrong. We're going to exit one because, well, we want to control the exit code Technically, by here, the if statement is going to execute just fine. And within the if statement, the echo statements are also going to execute just fine. So normally, by this point, the exit code would be zero, but this is a failure. The user did something wrong. Otherwise, this message right here shouldn't print. So we definitely want to make sure that a non-zero exit code is returned. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here. And before I run it, I have a typo right here. As you can see, I need a space right here before the closing bracket. That's really important. We'll just pretend like I didn't make that mistake and we'll minimize that. And let's go ahead and run the script. And what I'll do is I'll run it the same way at first. No surprise there. It did exactly what we needed it to do. But what if I run it without giving it an argument? It caught me. It's not going to let me continue. And this is great because when we write scripts and we require input, we want to make sure that we're receiving exactly the input that we should be receiving. So checking the input and making sure that it's good is absolutely a great thing to do. So what happens if I give it, well, several arguments? In this case, I gave it three directories. Same thing. We require exactly one directory path to be passed to the script. I've given it three. So, well, I didn't do the right thing, and it's letting me know that. That's great. So this is a relatively simple example, but I'm going to close this lesson right here because our final lesson, lesson number 17, that's actually going to be a very fun lesson. What we'll be doing is creating a backup script. And that backup script is actually going to require arguments as well. So this is not the last time that you'll ever see an argument in script. We'll actually be taking a look at that in the next lesson, and it will be part of our backup script. And actually, that's going to be a much more useful example of an argument. I mentioned earlier the example of creating a backup script and then giving it a path that you want to back up as an argument. And you know what? I didn't make that up off the top of my head. I was actually foreshadowing the next lesson 
because we're actually going to do that. Before we move on to that, though, I recommend that you play around with arguments and see what you can come up with. And when you're done practicing, you can go ahead and move on to the next lesson. So there you go. We've just finished going over arguments, which as you can see now are extremely useful when it comes to scripting and bash. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, we're going to actually start writing a backup script, which is going to be a ton of fun. But don't rush into that video. Just take your time. Make sure that you understand all of the concepts that we've gone over so far. And then when you are ready, you can go ahead and move on to the next video. And when you're ready, I'll meet you over in that video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.